Hello everyone and welcome to another PvMP video. Today I'm going to be showing fights with my Guardian and my Captain against a couple of Reavers. Now this is all post update 10 and my Freeps are both armed with 3rd Age Legendary items. My Guardian does have a 2nd Age belt in the later videos. But otherwise it's all 3rd Age weapons. They're wearing Heightbold gear. They're wearing pretty standard, uh, easily obtainable jewelry and stuff like that. So this is really a kind of a look at what to can you expect to be able to do as a free with entry level gear no pvmp specific stuff no second ages no first ages but kind of a entry level more baseline type stat how good is that is the freep there right now and how well did they compare in terms of everything obviously player skill comes in a lot more when you can't rely on audacity so i uh, will just see how it actually turns out anyway for this first fight uh, this starts right in the middle, and it is Korzerk. Now this fight it happens very shortly after my Guardian actually makes it to level cap for Riders of Rohan. So he is out of practice, it's not like I ever take him into the Etmores a whole lot anyway. But uh, definitely I'm noticing that I am very very rusty with my skills and everything. The other thing is that this is really my first time to actually try to put some of the new Guardian style uh, mechanics and stuff actually into play, and the big thing is that Guardians have gotten a lot more bleed potency available to them, even when they're not in overpower stance, not using hemorrhage and stuff, they can stack up a lot more bleeds, which I'm trying to focus on as my strategy for how to play the Guardians. Be defensive, be, you know, uh, survivable while you stack bleeds up on your opponent and you just l let them beat themselves against your tough hide and iron bulwark as you slowly chip away at them. It's very much like how the War Leader fights, actually. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons I do better with my Guardian than I do with my Captain, is because the Guardian plays more like the War Leader. Now, the one thing I'm not doing a good job of is I am not doing a good job of salting the wound at all. I don't think I've even hit a single one of the bleeds. I, I don't think I've managed to salt them. There, I finally salted that one. So, that is a major problem that I'm running into. Um, is making sure to actually get full potency. The other thing is, even though I'm not necessarily always hitting this stuff, uh, he's often managing to block and, or avoid or evade my attacks, and particularly my bleed placing attacks. And a big part of that is that you know he is rank 7, and he's also got a buff potion. Now, I'm not sure which one that is, but it's either going to be armor, resistance, or evade rating. If it's evade rating, that's going to be the most helpful for him. If it's the armor that's going to be kind of helpful if it is resistance, that's really not going to be helpful at all for him in this particular fight. But that's just what we're at. Uh, right there it looks like he managed to get a crit and pop off glory and victory not too long ago. So you know, that's part of the, the challenge of fighting a rank 7 is they can get more stuff going in their favor like that. That said, you know, for first fight, I think hit level 85. I'm putting up a really good show. Uh, there I finally go ahead and hit deep breath. I've already used up cooldowns twice, but uh, I do need to go ahead and get that second application if I'm going to have a chance against him. Well, otherwise, I mean, I'm just too close to being dev striked, um, which now I'm going to go ahead and stop and go ahead and shoot with the crossbow, which instead of wasting time chasing him and not accomplishing anything, I just want to put some more fire on him with the crossbow, let him have it like that, uh, go ahead, reapply ward, and that fun stuff and see if I can actually finish him off. Uh, looks like he just got another glory and victory there which means more healing for him so uh, he's really doing well with getting crits on my poor little squishy guardian it seems. <laughs> Part of that's just the mechanics changes but uh, I definitely like the way Corsair is playing he's doing a really good job. There goes a stun should be getting a shield smash right there a nice crit with that but uh, I am almost finished and down I go. So it was a close fight, uh, but he definitely did have an edge there for most of it, and he managed to pull out the win. The next up is Shurz, who is only rank 6, so a slightly weaker reaver. But uh, this is my captain, and right off the bat, I got a crit response with Dev Strike. I uh, got, got a crit there, got the defeat response, and I go ahead and hit Warcry. Now because of the way that my captain is built, that means that I'm not only attacking faster, but I've got 5% extra damage. Uh, really, there's no reason not to have that particular trait if you have a spot and you're not sure what to put in it. Enhanced Warcry, take it. It is a great thing to have. Now, 
the I messed up right there. I wanted to get my banner uh, equipped before Bunbury went down to deny him his defeat response. I failed at that, so he did get glory and victory off. So he's got some extra healing going on and all that stuff. Uh, fortunately, I did get another defeat response off of a crit with pressing attack, so I managed to get another heal. And I'm actually doing very, very well here. Down went that, uh, but I'm taking a ton of damage right now. I'm just desperately trying to finish him off, and I decide I need to go for another cutting attack to have any chance at this, which I managed to land it, and the bleeds are ticking, and down he goes. I did talk to Shuras later, and he said he did not hit Glory and Victory after that because he didn't think it was actually going to save him. It probably would have, but he didn't, so he did go down. So we go ahead and have a second round, which I'm only just now applying my mark onto him. And once again, bubbled Bunbury nice and early, but the big thing is no defeat response note from a crit right off the bat, and so that's really going to change the tempo of this entire fight. And now that, that's going to make all the difference. Alright, and Bunbury is at 2k, and he's already dead because he got a very nice dev strike there, so I probably should have popped my banner a little bit earlier, because he got his glory and victory once again. But, you know, sometimes you can't help it. They get a really good hit with dev strike, and they will take that um, herald out before you can react. Which is just one of those weaknesses with the, the entire build, is that you rely on having that herald out to be able to do some of the more fun stuff, but he is a liability. Now what I don't know is that I do not have Defiance traded right here, and so my last stand expires right there. I don't get a heal, it didn't last another 5 seconds, I didn't have a chance to hit my potion or my man heal, which is what I was planning to do. Uh, even with that, I don't think it would have made enough of a difference for me to win, but it certainly would have been a, would have been a closer fight. And now the Guardian. A uh, big thing to notice is that he's got a new shield now compared to what he had last time. It's not a super huge improvement, but it is an improvement. And of course I, I got a different weapon and I've got my second age belt for this, which my, my belt was what I showed you at the beginning of the video. And uh, its legacies and everything are just fantastic, especially in comparison to what I was using uh, previously. And the other final thing is, you know, it's w one rank lower for this Reaver and I've got a little bit more practice, so we'll see how well it goes. Of course, I was very, very slow in actually getting off a catch of breath there, so I've already taken a ton of damage, actually. And that's already put me off on the back foot. So that's uh, my mistake right there, is letting myself lose that very first block response without hitting catch of breath, and then I didn't get another response for, I want to say, uh, almost 10 seconds. So it took a while. Actually, yeah, 10 seconds. Alright, well, I am finally... S no, I didn't actually go ahead and bleed him. So that's the other thing I'm doing, is that I'm not following my strategy right here of trying to get more bleeds going, and that is causing me problems. Now, sure is wisely decided to move away while I have Pledge up and not feed me responses so I can't heal myself. I'm not able to get other stuff going. Uh, lets his bleeds tick and doesn't, you know, waste his energy and time attacking me and letting me attack back while I'm avoiding everything he throws at me. So that was very good of him in regards of how to deal with the Guardian hitting Pledge. We are getting very, very low here. I, th I think that was a second a application of Disarm, actually, so this fight has gone on for you know, oh, well over a minute since he's applied that. but. I'm just not going to be able to keep up with this. I, I'm already dangerously close to getting dev striked, and he's still got 3,000 morale, so it's not going to be in my favor, and their dev strike finishes me off. So I do go ahead and I come back for a rematch, and the first thing is that I do manage to hit him with the, my crossbow shots right from the beginning so he doesn't get charge off. Now the second thing is that this time I'm actually going to use charge. And using charge, it's that 10% damage boost. What? There's no reason not to use this offensively. Even if you just stand still, it is an extra 10% damage. I mean, why are you going to pass that up? And it's only a 2 minute cooldown. Use it at the beginning of the fight, and when you need it to be able to run away again, especially since you can reset your defensive cooldowns, it will be available again. Now, charge doesn't get reset with deep breath, but resetting pledge to keep yourself alive will certainly keep you alive long enough to get charge off again. 
Now the, the big things here is that I'm getting a lot more block responses off the off the bat. I'm doing much better about hitting catch a breath, and uh, I'm also getting some nice crits. I hit a, had a 1500 hit with shield smash just a couple seconds ago, and I'm also doing a much much better job of actually getting the bleeds on there. I went ahead and salted the wound right there, and I think I should be going for a. Sh a sweeping cut, there we go, which gets one more bleed on him. And there we go with the parry response, so I'm going to have a third one. So I got all three stacked up, and it, it's really noticeable just how fast that actually takes someone down. And I don't even have the bleed damage legacy, or any of the bleed legacies on my character, but I do have that uh, two pieces of the hit bold blade set, so I do have an extra 25% bleed damage. If I were to be able to add to that the another 25% from having the appropriate legacy, then the bleeds would really, really do a whole lot more damage. Now, I'm getting very, very dangerously close to dev strike territory, so I do go ahead and pledge right there, because I don't want to end up getting dev strike when I've got him on the, on the ropes, as it were. And uh, now I am going ahead and pursuing him. Fortunately, I do have the uh, quick of foot traded. Usually I don't have that, but in the Etmores I do tend to run with that, and so that lets me catch up to him and finish him off with a stun and another crit from To the King. Alright, so that is a couple matches against the Reaver. The main thing that kind of stands out is definitely that at those mid-ranked Reavers at least, and uh, mid-ranked for other classes is also going to be very similar, a Freep, who's just got entry-level gear, is actually not that far off of their power level, which is really a far cry from how the game has been in previous expansions. Previous expansions, a Freep, when they came in at entry-level, they were more akin to about a rank 4 or a rank 5 creep, and uh, a Freep that was halfway decently built for actual PvMP was more on par with anything from rank 6 through rank 8 in general, with you know, it's player skill coming in and stuff like that, and then a little bit higher ranks depending on class and whatever balance issues were going on in the Etmores at that time. That's not really the case anymore. Now, obviously, the, the game has progressed, and they decide that the balance needs to shift further along, or maybe it just happens that way, but uh, entry level is more balanced with a mid-rank creep, so the creeps have a longer way to go in order to actually be competitive with their counterparts. Well, for the Freeps, the big thing is that that's entry-level gear is very comparable to that rank set. And then when you think about the fact that you've got Audacity available, you've got Second Ages, you can go up to First Ages, there's all kinds of other better raid gear jewelry and things, I mean, there's a lot of room for improvement in the characters. You, think, you look at that, and then it, it becomes clear why people are struggling with dealing with free DPS and stuff in this particular update and iteration of the game, is just freeps are matched towards a higher rank of where things are actually comparable and, and competitive. Now, I don't know that's necessarily a wise choice, because the truth is, you know, we talk about how easy it is to get defilers and stuff to rank 10 with how fast infamy flows, but you don't have as many people up in the rank 9, the rank 10, as you think you do. There's a lot of them out there, yes, but it's not as many as you think. And when you realize that the majority of the free people's players, if they've got decent gear, if they've got second or first age weapons, they're on par with rank 8s and rank 9s, becomes kind of eye-opening as to why the Freeps seem to be more powerful. Now, I don't think the balance is as far skewed as people have been saying, but certainly it is a much lower barrier to entry for the Free Peoples right now, and uh, they can be a lot more successful with a lot less demands in terms of how well-built they are. Of course, being able to compensate with some actual player skill and some decent tactics goes a long way towards even in the odds or giving you an edge. So that's just kind of the way things are. Anyway, I believe that that is all for this time, so good luck and have fun out there, everyone. Ivanius is out.